All right, guys, I actually want to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about here. I got a little prop. All right, all right Rich. Uh, we all, thank Sorry. you. All right. <laughs> they were good. They were invented. They were there. So just don't trust your stuff to staff. Let's just start with a little quick poll. Who out there does not like donuts? Okay, we, we can, I'm sorry, you can just write off the back. How about those who do like donuts? You see those hands? Okay, you can amen during this if you need to, but I think we could say that donuts are a good thing, right? And so when I come into my shop, it's time to make donuts three in the morning, right? The newspaper is the, person, the only person that might beat me there that morning. And what do I read? I read about stuff going on in our local community. People are getting uh, robbed at our local campuses. Uh, people are getting shot. Even down at ODU, tragic is happening. You blow it up on the national scene, the national deficit's growing. We got politicians all over each other. So, like I said, we got issues. And I'm not saying that donuts are the only issue, I mean, the only, like, cure to that via our big unifier, but I mean, come on, we all love donuts. It's a congregal thing. So when I came to Norfolk, um, <laughs> I just want to let you know my passion is uh, people, changing lives in big and small ways. And right now, my avenue that I have are boxes and boxes of donuts and loads of energy. So that's what I do. And when I came to Norfolk, um, they always ask me, are you Navy? Are you military brat? No, actually I'm donuts, and that kind of confuses folks. So, <laughs> well, I tell you, no, the military, we actually go back together. Back in 1917, the Salvation Army sent a bunch of girls over to the front lines of France. They started serving donuts to the soldiers. The, the nostalgia for home started growing. The popularity started rising amongst the troops. They were doing 400 donuts a day, and that's not a lot if you think about it, really, but um, when you start considering what they were making the donuts with and how they were cutting them, they were using old artillery shells that someone generated and cut out. And what you saw is lines were growing out the tents and people were getting super excited about this donut. Uh, and what, what happened is 20 years later they said, let's just call it National Donut Day, which still exists today. So you can thank those guys ringing the bells for that National Donut Day. And people were still cutting them like that. Like, so you can get them and you can make them at home. The ingredients you can get right off Google. You've got companies that have expanded on that. You've got all these different varieties of things that are still happening today. That tradition's not gone away. But it thanks to this guy named Adolf Levitt. He's a Russian New Yorker. He came up with the first donut machine. And in 1934, his business plan made him $25 million a year selling these things. So he was cranking out 125 dozen of donuts. Right now, we can do about 1,000 dozen an hour. And this is how many donuts are eaten a year, folks. People love it, right? I love it. You love it. In this slide alone, 5,000 donuts will be eaten. Isn't that crazy? So what I did is we found this of, of the sales for the year, and I just called that desire for the donut, and that's all throughout the year. So what you see is about New Year's, we start to struggle. People got resolutions. Right? What is that? By February, we feel like it was a joke. We're actually donut lovers still. So we're still cranking them out, still so. This is what we see. <laughs> This is what I see every day in the shop. It's freaking exciting. That's why we carry Windex, and I got a person who just washes windows all day. <laughs> not, not just my shop, donuts across America. We've got varieties that are uh, all over. You got the vegan movement, the organic movement. I don't even know, but they got vegan donuts, organic donuts. In the same shop, that they're selling this donut, a maple glazed bacon donut. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's ridiculous. In Texas, things are still as big as they seem. This is a two-pound donut, 90 seconds, and it's yours for free. I know. I see. <laughs> Down in southeast, we've got what we call the uh, Pavlovian effect happening, what we call the hot light. People are swerving across four lanes of traffic, pulling a legal U-turn, and I've got the cop in my source, so we've paid him off. It's all right. But it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's crossing across all these different folks. Um, so what we have is from the start of the donut... You've got this guy. He's claimed to make the hole in the donut. Everyone says, all right, we'll give it to you. All the way to our buddy Homer Simpson. And everywhere in between, we've got celebrity obsessions. Uh, Vince Gill, a celebrity out of Nashville, is rumored to put a hot light actually in his car. Um, and the beautiful thing is it's bringing people together. Uh, last week, I was at a grand opening, and there were 60 people waited two days just to get first in line for hot donuts. And luckily, local politicians are grabbing onto this unity effect. There's like one politician who's decided next term he's going to use this in his movement. <laughs> Unity, right? We're bringing folks together. I've, I've, I've been to a lot of multiple different conferences and different groups where we're, we're partnering with um, the community, the, uh, the Boy Scouts. We had a big group, and every time I had a donut, they said, you saved my life. And regardless of what you're doing, um, I feel like there's an opportunity to change people's lives 
even if all you have is a box of donuts. So when you guys just come out over here, I got donuts for everyone. We'd love to see and chat with you. Thanks. Hey.